All right, everybody, welcome to my messy basement. So, and I'm shooting this with my phone. So we're going real gorilla style here. Um, I put out a challenge the other day to, since a lot of the moto vloggers are locked down, um, we can't really do a lot, especially here in Michigan, between the weather and lockdown and everything else, um, to show us your other hobbies. So, I figured that's what I would do. Uh, I'm into ham radio, so I figured I would show you guys my setup here. So, well, I guess we could uh, start at the top here and show us some things. That is actually a uh, mirrored glass piece that Josh at Bulldozer, U-H-L-D-O-Z-E-R, uh, made for me. That guy, if you need something made, absolutely amazing. Um, there's some other stuff that he made for me. And then I just got miscellaneous cables and stuff up there and get down here. Oh, there's uh, one of my contact cards, a QSL card. Um, QSL cards are cards that uh, ham radio guys exchange when they make contacts with each other. That's from uh, Last Man Standing. And then, of course, you know, got to have a picture of the wife. Can't get by without the wife. And then my FCC license, which does have, I mean, just my pertinent information, my... P.O. box on it, no big deal. Um, spare microphone for one of my handhelds. Some of my QSL cards. So that's uh, a picture that I actually took when I was up at the cabin. And then all the contact information is on the back of it. So that you'd fill in. Then just got my trusty humidor up here. But getting down to the equipment, um, I've got my. Uh, Samlex 1235M power supply. I like that one. It's got the meters on it, so I can keep track of, you know, um, basically what kind of current draw and stuff I have, and then, you know, while I'm using the radios and all that. And then there's a, uh, I don't know if I got batteries in that. No, nope, I took the batteries out of it. Um, that's actually something that Bulldozer made for me, too. That lights up and does all different colors. It changes colors, or you can choose colors. Um, then my handhelds. Uh, this is actually the first one I bought when I first got licensed. I had it before I got licensed, actually, I went, before I tested for it. Um, just a cheap little, uh, Baofeng or Baofeng, um, handheld does, uh, the two meter and 70 centimeter bands for local. And then I picked up one of the, uh, GT3s, which has a little better screen and stuff like that on it, replace the antennas on them. And then uh, my first serious handheld is my uh, Yesu FT70. That one is definitely a higher end unit than the other ones and very nice. Um, then we come over here, we've got oh, a few spare antennas. The antenna tuner, I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is a dual band radio. It's a cheap Anytone 778 UV. It basically covers two bands, uh, 70 centimeter and two meter band used for local stuff. Um, I mostly use that one just for listening in uh, on the 70 centimeter band, and I will transmit on that. But I use it for listening to different two meter frequencies while I have my main two meter radio over here, my ICOM 2300. Let's turn that up. It's scanning. So. Rinsey, rinsey, and all that happy stuff. That's uh, one of the Bay City repeaters. That's about 45 miles north of here. Um, but that's 2 meter. That's 65 watt. It's It definitely gets out pretty good. I can hit, you know, 50, 60 miles around me with the antenna that I've got put up for it. Um, everything's stashed in the attic, so nothing can be seen. I do have a video of that <clears throat> where I gave you guys the attic tour of all the antennas. And then the mic for that one control everything right here from it which is nice um and then any the tone mic you can do the same thing i mean control most of the features of the uh radio from the mic and then i've got most of my local repeaters and stuff programmed in there um but yeah i gave you guys the uh tour of the attic i've actually changed that up quite a bit i'm still using the same Two meter antenna for local, but I expanded my HF, which is high frequency, which is your long range radios, uh, which I'll show you here next. Um, I expanded that. Uh, 
the antenna that I had used to cover 10 meter to 40 meter. Uh, I expanded it to cover 10 to 80 meter. Um, if you don't know what that means, look it up. It's basically like 10 meters kind of local. Um, there's so many bands and so many things with ham radio that it's, there's so much that you can do and so many frequencies and everything else. I mean, I can talk, you know, around town with this or with this right here, my ICOM 7300, I can talk around the world. Um, I've talked quite a bit around the U S with it. I talked to somebody the other night and, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil from here in Michigan and it's a hundred watt radio. I mean, you don't need much, but it's, uh, it's nice. I don't know if anything's going on. We had, uh, yeah, there's a station. The guys from Italy are still on there. Um, but yeah, any of the, uh, the lines that you see there basically are frequencies, people talking or transmitting data or something like that. And it, it covers a ton of frequencies, everything from 10 meter to 160 meter. Um, again, if you're not familiar with ham radio, you're not going to know all of what that means, but it's, it's a bunch of different bands. So like, uh, like different stations, basically, um, different frequencies <clears throat> and there's all your, uh, frequency ranges, you know, 50 megahertz, 28, 24, 21. And they're, they're all different bands like this, is, you know, 3.5 is the 80 meter band. And then, uh, you know, in the seven megahertz range is the 40 meter band. And then 30 meter is 10 megahertz. That is only used for Morse code. <clears throat> you cannot transmit voice on that band. Um, and then 20 meter, the, the big ones that most people use are 20, 40 and 80. Um, 80 can be difficult depending on your antenna setup. Uh, especially like where I am, I have nothing outside, everything's stashed in the attic. So it's a compromise. Um, I really need, I mean, to be able to stretch that antenna out and get it outside, which I cannot do here or, you know, put up like a vertical antenna, you know, a 30 foot pole or a 30 foot uh, tower with a, you know, a 40 or 50 foot antenna on top of it, you know, something like that to really uh, make it effective. But yeah, it's a fun hobby. I've talked to people all around the world, all around the country. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And this right here, this is an antenna tuner. And what this does is basically, so like if you had a full wave 40 meter antenna, that antenna would be like, you know, 40 meters long. So obviously it's a giant antenna. Um, but what you can do is you can basically divide that down, you know, into half or quarter. And that's considered a quarter wave antenna because of the wavelength of the frequency of that. Um, if you're trying to cover all the bands with one antenna, you get a lot of mismatch. Um, so what it will do, uh, is let me show you here. Let's drop the power way down and make sure we're on a frequency where nobody is. Oh, somebody's there. And let's go to the menu and your standing wave is basically how efficient your antenna is. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you on that because this antenna is really efficient on 40 meter, but let's go to, whoops, got to get out of that. Let's go to 80 meter and let's go back down here to where I know this antenna isn't really tuned for. And let's run an SWR sweep. So the antenna is really efficient down here. It's not efficient up here. Um, that's high SWR. So what you can do to mitigate that is we'll hit this tune button right here. And you see that goes into tuning and now it's done. And let's go back down here. We can hit that again. And you can see that's improved. Um, this is a compromise antenna on 80 meter. So I don't use, I use basically from 3.8 to, you know, up to four, but most of my operation is in like this section right here. So I've kind of set the antenna up 
to be really efficient in that area because the lower areas of it, like down in here, I don't really use it. So it doesn't really bother me that it's not efficient down there. Um, but yeah, 7300 is a great radio. If you're getting into HF, I mean, and for the price, you can't beat it because it's a software defined radio. It's basically instead of having a computer in a box or like a computer connected to it, it's everything in a box. So that's pretty much it for uh, my ham radio setup. So I will go ahead and pass the challenge along. Um, we're locked down. So show us something other than a moto vlog. Show us your hobby. Take us on a tour of your garage. Show us your fishing gear. Take us, I mean, take us through another aspect of your life. Let us learn something. Let us pick up a new hobby. So... I definitely want to go ahead. There's a couple of people that I want to challenge. I definitely want to challenge um, Rusty Moto or Rusty Old Jixer or Rusty whatever your channel name is this month. I know that you've changed it up quite a bit. Um, I want to challenge the Jedi Brothers. I want to see what they can come up with. And I know that... Um, Two Clutch, a.k.a. Chase, I know he changed his channel name, and uh, Tink, I know you guys have pretty much stopped vlogging, but I kind of want to see, uh, kind of want to see what you guys have got too. So with that, I will bid you all a fond farewell, enjoy your, uh, enjoy your lockdown and your containment, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.